Disc two of Sin to God begins with Dirty Boy, which is surely one of the greatest Cardiacs songs. Written by Tim Smith and Bob Leith, the drummer, this song captures something of the divine. Um, you know, previously in this album, Tim Smith has sung about directing worship at you know, sometimes quite irreverently or tongue-in-cheek at dog-like deities and sometimes more kind of traditional Christian iconography. But here, it seems to be the music which kind of lifts the spirits to a new plane, you know, spiritually. And, um, and I think a lot of that's down to the chord progressions in this marvellous song. So we have lots of alternations between major and minor, which has always evoked a sense of awe and wonder. And then, uh, allied to that, many of the chords are linked to each other by the interval of a minor third. And um, chains of chords are created like that, which gives the music this never-ending, eternal, uh, yearning feel. It's something very strange where the chords kind of float up particularly in the chorus of this song. And that really helps bring this heightened spiritual sense to this song, very much in keeping with this worship theme, I think, going through this album. So how does the song begin? Well, we have a very short intro, don't we, with, as I've just said, a major and minor chord, E major, E minor. And then we have the riff. to the verse. This song is actually quite conventional in terms of its song structure, well certainly the first half of the song anyway. The verse is this extremely long but beautiful chord sequence. You can probably to the chorus and the chorus is like this again this sinuous uh, chord sequence a bit shorter at this time but it every time it's repeated it goes up it modulates up a semitone um, the first time we hear it it uh, goes around twice and this and out for those uh, shifts up a third to the riff we go back to the second verse with that beautiful long chord sequence and then we go back to the chorus again 
and this time the chorus is extended and in this, this spine tingling part of this album the chorus just seems to go on and on and on every time higher and higher of course the vocals get higher and higher as well it's really extremely uh, beautiful and it really raises us I think it kind of almost like a door into heaven I think uh, this chorus now Dirty Boy becomes a bit more irregular in terms of its structure after the second elongated chorus which seems never-ending going up uh, through the chromatic scale we eventually reach this uh, moment where So this section um, is kind of built around these, this rather kind of stark melody. And eventually that brings us to this wonderful um, close to this song, again a heavenly moment in this album, you know, we, we really feel that we've gone into a different dimension here, you know, a heavenly realm. Uh, over, a, over the words over and out, which I think is very moving actually, the uh, vocal line ends on a, a G sharp, which just hangs on for the rest of the song as a pedal and over that we have this chord sequence which we've heard a version of before in um, Fairy Mary Mag which goes like this It's just like just a wonderful, glorious end to a majestic and powerful song. So what the lyrics of Dirty Boy about? Well, they are rather perplexing, um, as many cardiac lyrics are. But you get the sense again of this this religious theme in the the words, um, a sense of Dirty Boy, perhaps being um, a Christ-like figure, even perhaps Christ himself. Uh, remember he was kind of suffers a modern day crucifixion in fiery gun hand and here's a, perhaps a similar idea, this dirty boy is being, um, is being killed, he's sent down over and out, the kind of craggy dress might refer to the kind of tomb in the rock. Um, we will praise him, we will praise him off his pins, clear him off all sin. Um, of course, dirty boy might refer to the fact that um, Christ, uh, according to Christian belief, took on the sins of the whole human race. So that might be a reference. The ver second verse, though, is more kind of domestic about the troubles of domestic life almost going up the stairs, breathing on their glasses, etc. But then by the end of the song, we're back to this idea of uh, over and out, um, this person dying. Billion is really a fragment of a song. Um, apparently it was one of Tim Smith's earliest compositions. And um, it's basically just this, uh, we have this piano part quite a 
beautiful little idea. Um, and lyrically, it seems to be about unrequited love. Odd Even is one of the more accessible songs on Sing to God. It's no coincidence that it was chosen to be a single, uh, along with Belly Iron Man Who. It's such a terrific, catchy song. I think it's really super pop song. It's fairly straightforward, you know, in terms of cardiac songs. Um, but that's not to belittle it. I mean, it is a really charming song, uh, although there is quite an unusual section, which acts as a kind of middle eight. But the song's based on this chord progression. Those chords, G, B, and E. That's a variant of that kind of musical fingerprint we've heard already in this album, uh, in the verse of Fairy Mary Mag and at the end, the coda of Dirty Boy. And um, that forms the bulk of the song, actually. The verse adds a couple of other um, chords as well. We had this. Daddy loved it, brother, by the side of sea. Something like that's a bit high for me. Then we have this, um, this beautifully melodic chorus um, with, again, you know, slightly unusual chord um, changes. I'll just sing the tune. have this um, middle eight where we have that um, that eccentric twiddly chromatic um, composition um, which we've heard already uh, I think it was in Fairy Mary Mag at the end of that song in, in disc one we hear it here again so it's another example of um, a kind of unity in this album a sense of unity uh, through redeploying these ideas a bit like that idea in uh, Dog Light Sparky. And what's the song about? Well, I guess it's the title Odd Even is another reference to this juxtaposition between opposites, which we heard in Eden on the Air. But also it seems to be about death. Died in Earth, did brother, by the side of sister. And um, it seems to be this, um, this uh, again, Jesus is mentioned, um, taking the soul uh, of the departed uh, to the afterlife and um, there's a kind of play between water and moistness and uh, heat and aridity. We now have two tracks by John Paul and uh, you know they're quite distinctive. Uh, very short but they very much act as a pair. Bell stinks and then bell clinks. Bell Stinks is an instrumental, full of kind of manic energy and fun. Uh, it's basically made of two ideas. The first one is this. And then we have a new idea. Bell Clinks is uh, a John Paul punk classic. Um, it's basically uh, a verse chorus structure and the verse is uh, kind of this idea. There's this uh, 
There's one bar which is sl cut slightly short, kind of helps give this kind of off kilter effect. I think there's a, a bar of three four stuck in with the four fours. And then the verse is repeated up a semitone. <laughs> And then it's all repeated again. We have this, uh, then this little break uh, goes like this. And then we have this great solo based on the on the uh, vocal melody of the verse but it's in this wonderful two-part harmony I think that's a re really kind of lifts this solo what John Paul does here that's like having two guitars playing and then um, we have the chorus well what are the lyrics about well um, the song refers to John presumably John Paul the writer um, a bit like Horse's Tale, we had some references to band names. And um, in this rather anarchic stream of consciousness way, it suggests to me the, the kind of inner tension in, in human beings between the sublime and the ridiculous, between logic and sheer craziness, uh, between chaos and order. Um, there's something about the kind of the joyful beauty of uh, humanity and the craziness and the destruction. He talks about fallen soldiers, for instance. Flap Off You Beak is one of my favourite songs on Sing To God. I think it's a really beautiful uh, song. Just the way the chords, the chord progressions work with the lyrics. There's such a kind of almost wistful feel about this song. Um, and also some of the uh, guitar effects, um, presumably John Paul, um, there's lots of uh, this kind of 50s sounding reverb and tremolo effects which I think really lifts the song as well. I love the way it opens, we have this intro based on A and E which, are the, which forms the bulk of the verse, but then we shift up a key, it's got this really wonderfully uh, moving effect. top of those chords we have various little riffs uh, one of them goes like this I think there we come into a chorus those kind of circular kind of circular fifth chords there and so on beautiful chord progressions um, and such a beautiful wonderful song this we do have a, another section um, da -da 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 -da. We work our way back to the uh, 
and that's a, that's the song really and remember I've got a description of the exact form as it happens in each of the songs from this album in the description below I think there's a bit of Ray Davis in the way that Tim Smith deliver, delivers this song um, I think the kinks are a big influence on him I think lyrically it kind of conjures up the idea of a a Victorian um, glass case full of stuffed birds perhaps on a artificial hollow tree that's the way I see it anyway and I can see uh, Tim Smith that well, the, the songwriter the narrator kind of looking at this in a childish way perhaps as a child there's a lot of childlike uh, wonder and uh, innocence in Cardiac's lyrics perhaps this child is looking at this glass case full of these stuffed birds and kind of feeling sorry for them you know surely there is no god in this menagerie where these birds which are supposed to be free are kind of imprisoned quiet as a mouse is this uh, atmospheric spoken word track um, perhaps related to flap off you beak there seems to be this witch-like character and um, tim smith uh, as a as a boy discussing how to resurrect these dead birds um, and if it carries on this uh, this theme found throughout the album of life and death of uh, resurrection um, of afterlife also of childlike innocence um, even Bob Leith the drummer turns up as a boy in this so again that self-referential element to the lyrics. Angleworm Angel was the first song I knew from Sing to God because it was included as a track on Sampler, the uh, compilation Cardiac's album released in 1995. It's such a visceral sounding track you know it's a big wall of noise uh, written by John Paul, who you know is responsible for much of the music on the second disc, and um, yeah, it begins quite unforgettably with this introduction, which turns out to be the chorus later on. And uh, like Insect Who's on Lassie in the first disc, there's this kind of triplet feel to this music. <laughs> which is then broken up by at the end quite brutally so it's rhythmically it's quite interesting uh, we then go into the verse again um, and that's basically the song you know verse chorus verse chorus and then we have a kind of a solo a kind of a rather sparse um, more texture led solo over the verse and then we have a slowed down version of the chorus and then the chorus proper extended at the end of this track and I think Angleworm Angel is a perfect introduction to this album and like Bell Clinks and some of the other songs on this album, the uh, lyrics, I think, suggest something of the kind of turmoil in the human heart between um, what we want ourselves to be and uh, how we actually are sometimes, how we don't quite live up to our expectations. So there's this kind of idea of original sin, if you like, um, but also the greatness we're capable of as humans as well. Red Fire coming out of his gills sounds almost like a show tune. Um, maybe the touch of a James Bond film theme about it as well, in the way that there's this uh, kind of orchestra added. Um, so we begin with this introduction, which uh, forms part of the chorus, which we'll hear later. And that goes like this. <laughs> Thank you. 
to that uh, idea again. So that's basically the song, it's very simple and then that's repeated. And lyrically we go back to the end of the first disc where we had that that short story or poem, Peril at Sea, where um, Action Fish was uh, talked about, who was saving the day, and this song is about Action Fish, Red Fire coming from his gills, uh, coming from that short story of course. and. Um, you know, in a typical Tim Smith childlike way, uh, quite often his songs are populated with these um, childhood superhero kind of characters, and Action Fish is certainly one of them. No Gold is a beautiful um, song, easily overlooked on Sing to God, uh, being in, near the end of the album. Um, and it's notable for the um, Beatlesque backward reverse guitars and really lifts the track in the production. Something could be from Revolver or something. Um, indeed, I think Tim Smith, I read in an interview somewhere, you know, loved the White Album. Um, so I don't know whether that's a nod to his love for the Beatles. And also there's some really interesting drum work in here, these kind of uh, rolls and these um, you know, quite militaristic style drums, which are perhaps at odds with the kind of gentle nature of the song, but really effective nonetheless. The song structurally is very simple. We begin with these, this four note idea. Then we have uh, the verse with these kind of really queasy psychedelic uh, style vocals, these effects put on Tim Smith's voice. <laughs> So the song really is an alternation between that four note refrain and the verse. What's really lovely as well in the production, we have these uh, kind of dreamy um, hallucinogenic strings as well, again very Beatle-ish. And the second half of the song, although it's a direct repeat of the first half, it's even weirder in its production and even more psychedelic. Lyrically, the song seems to be setting a domestic um, context. You know, there's perhaps a young girl looking at a mirror in perhaps a bedroom. There's references to a street and um, going home, perhaps, you know, kind of suburbia. And there's a sense that this girl wants to be perhaps the person, the other side of the mirror. She wants to be this person who she imagines herself to be. Um, and this might have some reference to the spiritual aspect of this album as well. Um, at the end of every street we want to go home, perhaps the idea that one day we will be the other side of the mirror as such. That's the way I read it anyway.
Nurses Whispering Verses is a classic cardiac song. They recorded it before um, in Toy World and the Seaside from the early 80s and I believe it was performed much in those days as well. But here it's giving a new lease of life with uh, extra guitar effects, um, you know, recorded, I guess, in the way Tim Smith would want it to be recorded. It's testament to how he felt about this song that he wanted it to be included on this uh, double album. Now, the Nurses Whispering Verses begins with this fantastic riff. It goes like this. <laughs> and so on and then we have this major minor thing again which is characteristic of this album alternations between the major and minor modes and uh, the riff is played again over the power chords but this time we have um, it's slightly different. Instead of a B flat, we have a B natural to make it a G major chord. So instead of Difference, so, you know, a little detail but really lifts this song. Then we go to the verse, then, and then we go back to. Then after a varied version of the um, the verse, listen out for the different vocal line there, really exciting, we come to the chorus where we have this idea. <laughs> then there's... Um, a short bridge section which takes us back to eventually after this massive and glorious build up back to the original riff <laughs> basically the song. There's a long kind of tailing off at the end of this track. Um, um, you know, perhaps a little too long, but then um, that's the end of this uh, marvellous uh, song, the final recorded version of Nurses Whispering Verses. Uh, the lyrics, well, you know, difficult to perhaps make sense of, but there's a, a pervading sense of dread and um, despair in these lyrics, uh, perhaps fear for the future as well. And then think never before did it seem so far away, all hostile to me, the nerve is bad, the sense is real. But also this um, sense of foreboding and uh, perhaps apocalypse is tempered by the kind of childlike way the lyrics are constructed. Foundling the last track of Sing to God is a rather beautiful but unassuming way to end the album. Um, there's a simplicity and a heart to this song which um, is perhaps reminiscent of um, No Gold a few tracks before. Um, we begin with this accordion C major chord with some modal inflections and we begin with the verse, which is this beautiful melody. I'm gonna hum the melody and down an octave because it's a bit high for me. Da -da -da. 
the verse and there's that kind of that, that synth sound down 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 it's kind of a motto throughout this song and there's a chorus which is quite short but uh, very beautiful And Foundling lyrically, a bit like Wireless at the end of the first disc, has a slightly kind of gothic um, horror feel to it. There's this kind of ghostly lady who seems to be um, coming back to her beloved. Um, but also a sense of uh, the afterlife, one of the recurring themes throughout the album. It seems perhaps uh, the two lovers... Uh, or the husband and wife, here comes the bride, uh, reunited uh, in heaven. So what can you say about Sing to God? It, it's just such an amazing album. Surely the pinnacle of Cardiac's uh, work. I love all Cardiac's albums, but I think Sing to God has a special place in its ambition, um, its experimental side the themes it's a very un unified album you know both in the lyrics and of course in the music certain ideas coming back but above all it's just incredibly beautiful and just speaks so much of the joy of life you know something perhaps from a childlike perspective which I think is so beautiful and Something also of perhaps a childlike view of eternity and of God. You know, I don't think, even though Tim Smith, I think, said it wasn't a religious album, and, you know, it isn't a religious album, um, but there's, it speaks so much, I think, of... Uh, there's such a strong undertow of spirituality uh, in this work. And, I, and I'm sure one day this album will be seen as a true masterpiece, you know, up there with the likes of the Beatles and David Bowie. At least I hope people will recognise Cardiacs and the songwriting genius of Tim Smith in that exalted company. If you've got this far, thank you for watching and uh, take care. Bye.